Every year in the UK, we remember, remember the 5th of November. And then we burn some stuff and light loads of fireworks. But why do we still remember this doomed attempt to wipe out the political elite of the UK 400 years later? And what is it we're meant to be remembering exactly? To answer that, we need to look at the events that led up to it, and then we can look at what happened afterwards. Let's start with the team. In a way, this was a classic heist setup. It might be the first ever heist-like plan. Nah, it wasn't, but still it's fun to think of. We have this guy, well actually, Guido Fawkes, but we'll just call him Guy. And this guy, he's called Robert Catsby. He's the leader behind the whole thing. He's a country gentleman. He has no real power, but he has some connections. The rest of the team are his cousin Thomas Winter, John Wright, Francis Tresham, and Thomas Percy. He's worth mentioning because his uncle was Earl of Northumberland, and so much closer to power than the rest. He's important later. There are some others later in the story, but they're not crucial to this story, so we're going to skip over them. Guy Fawkes was no one particularly special, except he'd been fighting wars in Europe on behalf of Catholic kings, and so he was relatively unknown to the British establishment. So we have a team. What about the why of it all? They're all Catholics? Why is that important? Well, a little thing called the Reformation happened around 80 years before, and England has been Anglican for around 40 years non-stop now. So Catholics went from being the overwhelming majority to a small minority in a generation. Elizabeth I has just died in 1603 and has been replaced by James I of England slash James IV of Scotland. He's Mary, Queen of Scots' son. She was very Catholic. So the Catholics think things will be easier with him in charge. They aren't. They can't openly worship and priests are sneaking between houses to give private masses. James doesn't do much and there's nothing on the horizon to help them. Some Catholics are still in the nobility and they are generally happy with being closet Catholics and waiting all this nonsense out until they can be open again. They would have to wait a long time. Our merry band and some like them think, we've had enough of this. Better to die trying to change things than it is to live like this. Add to this, some major European monarchs have been assassinated for their religious beliefs not too long ago such as Henry III of France, so it was very possible that they could pull it off. And more recently, someone had tried to kidnap Elizabeth I in 1601 and failed. The plotters learned from this too, mostly to keep it to a small group and maintain secrecy. So why and who is locked down? What about how? This is the English slash British Parliament now. It's burned down since then and been rebuilt, but back then it wasn't super secure. You could just kind of waltz in, and there were secret tunnels that no one knew about. After they've got the team together, they keep everything pretty secret. Only that small group knows what will happen. We know they wanted to kill the king, but they decided to go one step further. The basic plan is to dig a tunnel under the House of Lords and smuggle loads of gunpowder in. They know that James will have to come to open parliament, and once it's announced, that's the chance they need. It will be James plus most of the establishment. The plotters are looking to decapitate the British government, but because of how assassinations may fail to change anything, they need an extra layer to the plan. The second they heard the king was dead, Catsby and co would go to the Midlands ready to launch a rebellion that would help them take control after the explosion. Our guy will light the fuse. What's not often talked about is what they planned to do if it had been successful. They were willing to play it by ear to a degree, but one thing was sure, they wouldn't abolish the monarchy. They'd pick James's daughter, Elizabeth, who would run the country behind the scenes. They were waiting to see who would rush to be part of the bright new country once James and co were gone. How were they caught? This is Lord Monteagle. He's the one who busts them, either by the vibes of the Catholics around London or a leak within the plotters. He writes a slightly vague letter to the court and they spend days trying to figure out what to do while James is out of town. The court and James sit on it for a while, a bit clueless. The plotters know about the letter, but they try and work out if the government really knows what to expect. The government starts to search Parliament and they find our guy. And the plot is okay for now. He gives a fake name, John Johnson, great thinking guy, says he works for Thomas Percy and they just carry on as though this was perfectly normal. But they do realize something was a bit sus about this guy and they already know Thomas Percy is suspicious. They search again and this time he doesn't get so lucky. Guy Fawkes was captured, but what about the rest of them? They flee to the Midlands to carry out the rest of the plan, the rebellion part. It was close to where Princess Elizabeth lived all the easier to kidnap her and put her on the throne once her dad is dead. They tell a priest that they've killed the king and most of parliament. They think everyone will celebrate. It's the opposite. They look horrified and ask them to stop what they're doing. They realize their imagined support wasn't there. They leave and try to gather followers. 
but they never get a big enough force. Eventually they get to Hobbitch House via Warwick Castle where they got some gunpowder. That same gunpowder accidentally sets alight and kills Catsby and burns others. Then the sheriff turns up and most of the group are killed with a few surviving. Catsby, the main leader, is gone and was never interrogated. But our guy Guy has been arrested. He's interrogated and hanged. For hundreds of years now, we've burned a bonfire and launched fireworks in memory of this event. But why? Why were we so keen to celebrate the almost murder of the king and his government? Or more precisely, why have the UK government since then never sought to forget it? Part of it is tradition. There were other major events that were celebrated a lot back then, e.g. the defeat of the Spanish Armada just 20 years before, or the execution of Charles I, around 50 years later. But we don't celebrate those with a special day and those of tradition now, do we? This is different. Here's the law that said we had to remember it, but for whose benefit? It was repealed 253 years later, but the habit had largely stuck by then. But to me, it seems that we are told to remember it, as it's a way of saying what will happen if ordinary people oppose the government force. You'll be executed, and your name will become the generic word for a man, Guy. So this was close to being one of the bloodiest events in European history, but just under 200 years later, the French started a little revolution that definitely ended up being one of the bloodiest events in history. But was all that bloodshed inevitable? Watch this to find out.